Let's look at the steps involved in configuring an edge triggered interrupt. The hardware step is to connect PF4 to the switch. That's the one on our launch pad. The software steps are to make it an input, uh, to not do alternative function, not do analog, to not do P control. So all these bits will be zero. The interesting step is to set up for the edge trigger. We have the direction bit, the input sense bit, we have this uh, IBE bit, we have this IBV bit, and we have this uh, IME bit. And these are the bits that we will set to specify the mode for edge trigger. In all of the modes, we're going to set the direction register to a zero. And in our case, we're interested in edges, so we were going to set the IS bit equal to zero, and that means edge. The next is we're going to clear the both bit, because we don't want both, but we do want the rising edge or the falling edge. So the IEV bit zero means it's a falling edge, edge triggered. The IE V bit equal 1 would be a rising edge. And the last mode that we could look at or use potentially is the both mode equal to a 1. Doesn't matter what this one is and in that mode we're going to get both interrupts. Both edges will cause an interrupt. So if I were pressing a switch then, John, it would interrupt on the touch and the release. That's what this mode would do. But the mode we're going to use is this mode here because we want just a touch uh, to cause an interrupt. This last bit will be a 1, and that says once you see the interrupt, once you see the trigger, cause an interrupt. So the idea of an arm is the trigger will cause an interrupt. So the mode we're going to use is this mode right here. Next, let's look at some other things we have to do. Interrupts use vectors. Vectors are addresses which tell the system where to get the software to execute. And so there are lots of vectors in the system the particular vector that we're going to be using is the one here located at address 0x0000000B8. And this is going to be the port F interrupt service routine. This vector table are 32-bit addresses, and they begin at location 0. So at location 0 is the initial stack pointer. At location 4 is the initial program counter. Uh, somewhere in the middle will be our cystic vector. And the one that we're interested in is the port F, the port F interrupt service routine, which is located down here in ROM location B8. So for each interrupt that is available on the launch pad, there is a corresponding entry in the interrupt vector table that tells the system what interrupt service routine to run when that particular interrupt occurs. Exactly. And there are hundreds of them. The one we're interested in is this one right here, the port F interrupt service routine. Next, let's talk about priority. Priority is like you'd, like you'd imagine. Priority means if two things happen at the same time, which one goes first? which is most important. And there's a register on the system pri called priority 7, and it turns out that bits 23, 22, and 21 of this register will specify a number between 0 to 7, 
and set the priority for the port F interrupt. Each interrupt that's possible has a three-bit location in one of these priority registers to specify its priority. So priorities not just pertain to two things happening at the same time, but if one priority, uh, one interrupt service routine is currently running, and if another interrupt were to occur, the question of whether this interrupt continues or is in suspended and this new interrupt that occurs gets processed. The priority answers that question. If a higher priority interrupt were to occur, then the current interrupt service routine is suspended and the new interrupt service routine runs and then control returns to the interrupt service routine that was suspended. Exactly. So a high priority interrupt service routine, let's say this one is at priority one and this one is at priority two, a high priority interrupt can preempt a low priority interrupt service routine. In this example, we're going to set the priority for this interrupt to two, which means a zero or one could preempt, but a two through seven would not. So we saw the vector and the priority. Next, we're going to have to look at an enable for this interrupt. There are two enables. There's one specific enable in the nested vectored interrupt controller enable register 0 and it turns out that bit 30 uh, will have to be set a 1 to enable the port F interrupts. And the second is a global interrupt enable for all interrupts, and that exists in the prime mask register, which exists in the processor, and that's the I bit, and the I bit has to be zero to enable. And if it happened to be a one, that would mean disable. All right, next let's look inside at the port F. There are three registers in the port F edge triggered uh, mode. The, each of the bits in port F could be edge triggered and the one we're interested in is port F bit 4. So we're interested in bit 4 of these registers. And the IM is the ARM bit which we will set one once in the initialization such that we want port F to have an edge triggered interrupt. The actual trigger bit is right here. There's the trigger bit and we can look at it if you want to. Uh, the trigger bit here is in the RIS, raw interrupt status register, and there's the trigger bit. And we have one more bit, uh, bit four of the interrupt clear register. If we write a one to this bit, that will acknowledge or clear the trigger. In summary, the hardware, which is the falling edge of PF4, will set the trigger and the software will acknowledge the trigger by writing a 1 to the interrupt clear register.